Praise the Lord. Good morning. How are you? Amen. Now, most are very fine. And this morning, for the Lord giving us a day just to come into his presence. My name is Rosemary Wanjiro Kamau. In the app, they normally use Wanjiro. So sometimes when we are checking there, they are looking for Kamau and they cannot. So Wanjiro is another name of Mrs. Kamau. Amen? Yes, and I'm married to Mr. Kamau, who is in the house this morning. Amen? Uh, we, we are blessed with two young men. They are also in the house. And I want to thank God for my family, even for the support they've continued to give me as I've continued even to seek the Lord concerning our message today, Bwana Sifiwe. Amen. We want to thank God this event for our dad, Bishop, and our mom, Alice, even for the chance to come and minister this morning. I don't take it for granted just to give an, be given a chance to come and minister to you, Bwana Sifiwe. Thank you for the pastoral team, even for also allowing me to share the pulpit uh, it's not easy, but I want to thank God because the Lord has something in store for us this morning. Amen, amen. Uh, I want to, we want to go straight to the word of God. And we go to the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 20 and 21. And... In the wealthy house or in the wealthy home, some utensils are made of gold and silver, and some are made of wood and clay. The expensive utensils are used for special occasions, and the cheap ones are for everyday use. If you keep yourself pure, you will be a special utensil for honorable use. Your life will be clean and you will be ready. Praise the Lord. Yes, this morning the Lord is going to speak to us and I know we are going to be ministered to. I like that those two verses we have led in NIV and we are talking uh, in N NLT and we are talking about the vessel of honor. The vessel of honor. I like the message Bible. The message Bible says this. In a well-furnished kitchen, ladies, we are here. There are not only crystal uh, goblets and silver platters, but waste cans and compost buckets. Some containers used to serve meals, others to take out garbage. I like that verse. Others to take out garbage. And imagine it is a utensil, it is a vessel. And verse 21 says, become the kind of container God can use to present any and every kind of gift to his guests for their blessing. So today I said we are talking about a vessel. Vessels of honor. What is a vessel? A vessel, it's a hollow utensil or container that can be used to put maybe something like soup, it can be used to put something like tea, it can be used to put oil. Like when we are having the anointing oil, we have seen some of those containers. And uh, even a cup, a cup is also a utensil. It's a container, it is a vessel. And especially mostly, or most of those containers, we use them for liquids. And a vessel can be defined by what it contains, whether honorable or dishonor. And this morning, when we are talking of a container, we are talking of a vessel. This morning, I have a vessel here. This is a vessel. And this vessel... It can be used to take tea. It can, doesn't have tea this morning. 
but you can see. This is a vessel. And this vessel, the Bible is telling us that in the big house, in the big house, in a wealthy home, a wealthy home, like this morning when we are talking about the wealthy home, you can go back to your home and think about your home. Some of us, when we were growing up in our homes, there were some uh, utensils that used to be for visitors. And they used to be put in a cupboard up there. Others, they were of everyday use. Like my grandmother, she was very strict with the vessels that were for visitors. Then she would come and ask, Wanjiro, why did you use that one? And I'm like, okay. But now these days we have known. Whether we the visitors or we can use these vessels every time we want. This is one of the vessels. This is a cup that can be used to drink tea. It can be used to take porridge. It can be used to take soup. And we are told it's an expensive utensil. For example, this one. Uh, this cup, if you look at it, it's not just an easy cup. This one is an an instrument, or rather it's a utensil that is of honor that I can serve my visitors with. And it's very important because we are told, the Bible is saying very well, because I want you to look at those verses. Some are very expensive for special occasions. So we are saying this one is for special occasions. I have another one here. Yes. This one, I don't think this is a, for a special occasion. This is written, yes, happy Easter, Coca-Cola. But this one, if you come to my house, I will not serve you with this container, with this vessel. I will not serve you with it. It's not honorable. It's not honorable. Why? Uh, not because it is made of plastic, but just looking at it, you will find that as I, you take tea with this, it becomes very hot. So you are holding it and you are like, it will fall down. It's not an honorable uh, utensil. It's not an honorable utensil. I have another one here. Yogurt, daramea. And we have them all over. Yes, it's as a vessel. Does it look honorable? We go to the supermarket, we buy the yogurt. But after that, we are supposed to throw it where? In the dustbin. But remember, it is a vessel. The Bible is saying it's a vessel. It's a vessel, but to me, this is not an honorable vessel. It's not an honorable vessel. But remember, we are saying that a vessel is divine by the, what it contains. Whether it's honorable or dishonorable. Then, as you continue, we are told, those vessels, they are, we don't only have the silver, not just only the silver or even the gold. We have a silver container here. It's not just the silver that we have. We also have what we are calling the wooden container. We have seen this. But can we serve teeth from this? Porridge? Can we use this for porridge? No. But it is a container, it is a vessel, but the Bible is saying in that big house, we don't just have the, the silver ones, not just the, the gold, we also have the wooden. So we are saying in the house of God, when we are talking about the house, of, the house, we are not just talking about that home where you come from, we are talking about a, the big wealthy home. This is the church. Praise the Lord. This is the church. Others are made of clay. I don't know how many have ever seen this one. This is made of clay. This is a vessel made of clay. And it's also important in the house of God. In the house of God, we have all these utensils. And they are used for different purposes. So we are saying, when Paul was writing to Timothy, he said, or Paul was urging Timothy to be the kind of person Christ would use 
for his noblest purpose. And he uses these metaphors of utensils, some of honor and others of dishonor. And this refers to the fact that there is no such a sinless perfection, you know, in this other side of the resurrection. And there is no problem in every Christian life which only can only cannot be tackled by anything, but any problem that we come across can be tackled by the cross. We have just read Omana sang about the cross. All this can be cured through the cross. In verse 21, we are told that this can only happen by making the cross the object of your faith which will give us or give the Holy Spirit power that alone that can accomplish the task of purging ourselves that cannot, you cannot purge yourself. We have said, I so I'll cherish the old dragged cross. Why? Till all my troubles I lay down. Let's get some uh, lessons from the scriptures. One of the lessons that you are getting from the Bible or the verse that you have read, we are saying that there are different vessels in any kind of big house. And we have said this one relates to the, the great house is the family of God that is the church. And all these vessels are not the same. I have shown you. They are not the same. Some are of great honor. Others are of dishonor. Some are spe for special guests, like the cups that you have seen. Others, they are used for dusty beans. They are like, for, they are waste cans. Whereby, even as we go out, we have a dustbin there. And it is a vessel. And we are asking ourselves, even as we go through uh, this lesson, or this topic this morning, we ask ourselves, what kind of vessel am I? Am I a vessel of honor? Am I a vessel of dishonor? A vessel is actually defined like what, by what it contains, whether it is porridge, whether it is soup, whether it is uh, juice. And in contest, as children of God, we choose what we want to contain. We choose what we want to contain in our lives. And the things that any vessel contains are the things that the vessel allows. For example, if it's a cup, the cup will allow tea to be put there because it can be able to contain that particular tea. And to relate this, there are many, many responsibilities that we are supposed to do as the children of God. And the things that are poured, the things that are poured through in our lives, because we are vessels, these things that are poured in us is what we normally see, not, is normally what we hear, what we watch, what we read, or even what we say with our mouth. That determines what kind of vessel that you are. I want to look uh, about four responsibilities of a believer. Our responsibility as a vessel of honor. One of the things as a believer is, as a vessel of honor is, we must guard what gets or what, what is poured in us. We must guard what is poured in us. The Bible says in Proverbs 4 verse 23, Proverbs 4, verse 23. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it there are issues of life. Thank you. Keep your heart with all diligence. You are guarding what is being poured in your heart, in your vessel. Keep vigilant, King, uh, Message Bible. Watch over your heart. That's where life starts. I like that. Keep, I mean, keep or be vigilant because you have to watch actually what is coming out of you. That is where life starts. So life starts from your heart. It starts from your heart. Number two, 
continue to meditate on God's word day and night. This is your responsibility as a vessel of honor. Continue to meditate on God's word every day. Keep this, uh, Joshua 1 verse 8 says, Joshua 1 verse 8, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest uh, observe to do according to, that is written therein. For then thou shalt make way, your way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. That is what Joshua was told. Joshua, when he was, when he took over from the children of Israel, when Moses uh, died, he was given actually responsibility of t going together with the children of Israel to the promised land. And when Joshua could not even continue with the journey, when he was feeling so weak and he was asking himself, will I be like Moses? Do I have strength like Moses? God actually told him that he's going to give him success. He's going to be strong. He's going to be courageous. And because of that, he was told he should meditate you know, upon the word of God day and night. That the Book of the law should never depart from his mouth. That he should meditate upon it day and night. So when we take the word of God as believers, when we meditate upon the word of God, then that is the kind of vessel that the Lord is looking for. Number three says, think Christ-centered thoughts. Think Christ-centered thoughts. And in Philippians 4 verse 8, it says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good of, uh, of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think of these things as that is your responsibility as a believer. That is your responsibility as a vessel of honor. That you should think of these things. These things that are of excellence. And if there be any worthy of praise, dwell on these things. Those are the things that are supposed to come out of our mouth. And the message Bible says, summing it up. That is saying, finally brethren, summing it up, friends. I would say you will do best by filling your mind and meditating on things true, noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious, the best, not the worst, the beautiful, not the ugly, <laughs> things of praise, not things to curse. So we are not supposed to curse as a vessel of honor. We are supposed to bless. We are supposed to praise. We are supposed to think of the things that are godly. We are supposed to think of those things that, you know, will bring praise to our God. So when we are praising, when we feel our hearts and we are meditating on the word of God, when we feel our hearts with Christ-centered, even when we go out there and we find people who are doing something different, because we are supposed, our minds are supposed to be filled with those things that will bring glory and honor as a vessel. And this vessel, we are saying it is a vessel of honor which God wants to use. And since God wants to use this vessel, this vessel has to be not just a vessel, but the vessel has to be very, very clean. And it has to be very, very neat. Because if it is not clean, the Lord will not use that vessel. So when we have been filled, or when we are Christ-centered, when our thoughts are always thinking about God, when our thoughts are filled with lovely things, when our thoughts are honorable, when our thoughts are pure, when our thoughts are lovely, whatever is good, of good report, it should come out of our hearts. Such that when we go, like uh, there are times we go in a matatu and you're there and you find people, there is some music that is going on there. 
And actually, that music can take you away for sure if you don't have pure thoughts. You will think, ah, that song is not bad. Huh? And you will find even many Christians uh, singing Firirida, Firirida, and I'm like, goodness. You know, that song has gone all over and people are thinking that is a gospel song. It is not. Yes, you find people, they are always all over Firiridaling, Firiridaling. And I'm like, huh? Yes. So let our thoughts be filled. Let them be pure. Let's be holy. As a vessel. Because the Lord wants what? A pure vessel. And when the Lord wants a pure vessel, I have a cup here. This is a vessel. And I can choose to give Sarah to take tea with it. Yes. Let me just give Sarah. And then she can tell us whether she will take from that cup. Yes. Yes? Why? <laughs> okay. She's How is that cup? Hey, I cannot take from. But when you are looking at it, looks fine, smart. But inside, you can see it's very dirty. Ilikunywa uji, sijui siku gani, na ikuoshwa. Yes, it was not washed. And the Lord wants to use a clean vessel. And not just a clean vessel outside. But a clean vessel from outside and inside. And that's why you cannot go free readering. Because you are clean. You cannot go just saying anything. And then after that you are saying, oh, uh, it was a slip of the tongue. By the way, there's nothing like the slip of the tongue. There's nothing like the slip. We have said from your heart in Proverbs, the issues of life, that's where life starts. So when you're, you meet somebody and you are like, mm, I don't want to use some of those words that people use. And then later you realize, what did I say? For sure, if you are a clean vessel and vessel of honor, you, the issues of your heart are the ones that are supposed to come out. Your words should be of praise. Words to bless. Words not to curse but to bless. What's to bring praise and even praise to God. Praise the Lord. When we are vessels of honor, a vessel of honor is a clean vessel. And if you're taking water, actually, when you look at Bishop's table, there is always a, a glass, a clean glass to take water, to take juice, and this is what God wants. That when he looks, he can see through and see this vessel is clean. And how are you going to be clean? How is, how is your life going to be clean? You, you are not going just to ask God, clean me, clean me, use me, use me. It has to be practical. Somebody said this. I read a devotion from Pastor Adeboe. And there was this lady who was saying, Lord, use me. Lord, use me. Lord, use me. Use me. As I go to preach, use me. Use me. And nothing was happening. Nothing was happening. And God taught this lady a lesson. One time, when she went out, she wanted to use washroom in the public place. Those days, not like these days. And the first washroom she went, she peeped. She could not get in. She left. She went to the second one. She peeped. She could not get in. She went to the third one. She could not use any of those washrooms. And the Lord spoke to her and asked her, I thought you wanted to use a washroom. How come? And she said, they are all dirty. They are all dirty. Very dirty. Very dirty. And actually she was saying very dirty. And then God spoke to her and told her that exactly 
how you are. I cannot use a dirty vessel. I cannot use an unclean vessel. I need to use a pure vessel. A holy vessel. A vessel of honor. And that's what this sister realized. She was not actually doing the right thing. Number four. Be in the right company. Choose your friends wisely. Or choose your friends carefree. When we are talking about friends, and at your age you are wondering, how do I go and start looking for friends? And you are thinking, even at your age, you need to get the right friends. We have still the young people here. And all of us, we need friends that will bring glory and honor to our God. In 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33, what does it say? 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33. Be not be deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Bad company corrupts also good morals. There's another version. So, don't be fooled by those who say such things. That bad company corrupts bad character. God wants us to be people who are of good character. And what is the character of God? How are you going to have the character of God? How are you going to be the character of those people that love God? Remember, it's not everyone who is, who are, or who is used by God in every other way. You can choose where or which way you want the master to use you. You have also your part to play if you want to be used as a vessel of honor. And the question is, are you ready to be used by God and to become a vessel of honor? Are you ready? And if you are ready, some of the things for some, to show that you are ready, you need to have fellowship with God. We need to have fellowship with God. And the knowledge of God is actually life's greatest asset. That's what I normally say. The knowledge of God is the life's greatest asset. So the more you know God, the more you discover who you are. The more you know God, the more you discover who you are. So if you are very far from God, or if you are far from God, you can never know his divine plan and purpose for your life. And the nearer you are to him, the more you know his plan for your life and the secrets of the fellowship of God. We have just sung about Jesus, even, you know, the cross. Today's worship was good about the cross, the cross, you know, going near the cross. There is actually a precious fountain when you go to the healing stream that flows from Calvary's mountains. So when you are near to God, it means you have fellowship with God. You have fellowship with God. And how can you have fellowship with God? Number one, you need to know. You, have, you need to have prayer. You, all other, you need to pray for you to have fellowship with God. You need to pray. And after praying, we normally have fasting. Fasting is also part of becoming a vessel of honor and being close to God. The other thing is study the word. Study the word. You need to study the word. And something else, to be in, in the presence of the Lord always. And when we are saying to be the presence of the Lord always, it doesn't mean that every day you are in this CIK cathedral to be in the presence of God always. For example, our pastors, they are always here. So could we normally say they are always in the presence of God because they, they work in church? 
Huh? Because they are always working in church. So now we can say Bishop, Mom Alice, Pastor Miricent, Mwashi and Kibera, yeah? Pastor Beatrice, they are always in the presence of God because they work in church. That is not being in the presence of God always. Even you who is walking, walking to your place of work, you are using the matatu, you can be in the presence of God even when you are in the matatu. In your meditation, you are meditating there. You can tell the Lord, I am your vessel. Use me even in the matatu. Use me as I drive. You see, like, there are times when uh, the drivers, when we are driving, and people say, ah, you are such a good driver. But me, I know my tell a person, it is me and Jesus. Actually, anytime I'm on the telling, I tell God, I'm driving with you. There are times you go long distance, drive. Not when I figure, hey, you are such an experienced driver. It's not about experience. It's about God. It's about God. God being with you and using you as a vessel. As a vessel of honor. So it's always good to be in the presence of God. And in the presence of God, there is praise. There is worship. And also quiet times. You know, to be in also in gatherings of believers. And the more the word of God you ab observe or absorb in your heart, the more of the relationship you have with God or even the revelation of the word of God. So we are saying what? Becoming a vessel of honor. It's all about setting yourself apart for God to prepare you for the use for his kingdom or for his glory. To be a vessel of honor or dishonor is also a choice. You can choose. Whether you want to be a vessel of honor or a vessel of dishonor, you can choose. I want to be a clean vessel. You can choose and say, I want to be a vessel that God can use. So let's not settle. Let's not settle for less than God highest and best. Allow God or allow God to use you as a vessel of honor for his will. You do not, maybe if you don't feel like going close to God, you only need to stay close to him so that you can have that relationship with him. So that you are, when you have a pure heart, then the rest of the things the Lord is going to take over. What a joy to be a vessel of honor. What a joy to be a vessel that God is ready to use. What a joy even to be used, whether in church or out there, by God. Let's be pure. And when we are pure, we are saying, stay away from sin. Stay away from sin. That is how to be pure. Activate the fruit of the spirit in your heart. Then that is purity. We are talking of the fruit of the spirit. When the fruit of the spirit is in you, that is the fellowship you are talking about, being the, uh, having fellowship with God. And the fruit of the spirit is actually totally switched on if we really want the vessel of honor. We all know Galatians 5, 22 up to 23. But the spirit or the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperament, against such there is no law. The fruit of the spirit. When you have the fruit of the spirit, then we know very well you are activating this fruit in your heart and the Lord is going to act in your life. And even as we finish, we are saying what? You are here for you to be a vessel of honor. You are in the midst of many people. But one of the first thing you should be or you should have is you must be born again. That is the first thing for you to be a vessel of honor. 
the first thing you must do what we're calling or you should purge yourself into the vessel and to honor you have to be born again so anyone who wants to be a mighty vessel to God I mean uh, to be a mighty vessel of honor used by God you must be born again so maybe you are here and you have not yet known the Lord and you are desiring I would like to be a vessel of honor. We don't want to assume that all of us who are seated here, we are saved. So as we finish, we'll pray with you that God will also use you as a vessel of honor. And we are asking each one of us, we are saying it is a choice. We need to choose to become vessels of honor. We need to choose that me as a vessel, I don't want to be a bean of dust bean. I don't want to be a dust bean. A dust bean is not a vessel of honor. A dust bean is you are throwing, you choose something, you throw. You eat a banana, you throw in the bean. You eat an orange, all the peelings, we know we have dust beans all over. Even in our compound, we have dust beans. That's one of the verses that we read that we need to take care what kind of vessel we are. The last verse I want to read is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. And, but we have this treasure of earthen vessel that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Second Corinthians 4, verse 7. We are saying the excellence of the power of God, not of us. So being a vessel of honor is not about you. It's not about me. It's about God. The excellency in the power of God. When we put God first in our lives, when we allow God to take over, then we will be vessels that God wants to use. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you this morning. We are very grateful, dear Father, for visiting us and speaking to us, oh God. We desire that, Lord, that you may use us as vessels of honor. We desire that, God, our hearts will be pure, will be clean, our Father, that your Holy Spirit will have a resting place in our hearts. Father, we want to thank you because you are our God and there is none who is like unto you. We worship your name, O God. We give you glory and we give you the honor because, dear Father, we know with you all things are possible. We love you, Lord, and we worship you. And as we continue praying, I will ask the last question I was talking about. You are here, you are not born again. And you'd like to give yourself to Christ. You'd like to be a vessel of honor even this morning. You can raise your hand and we are going to pray with you. Are you here? And you'd like to give your, commit your life to Christ? Are you here? Father, we thank you. We bless your name, O oh God. We want to thank you for your mercies are normally abounding to us even this day, dear Father. We are praying that, Lord, you help us to be purposeful even in becoming on, uh, vessels of honor. We pray that, Lord, you help us to make a choice of doing the right thing, our Father. Help us to make a choice, our Father, of knowing whom to walk with, our Father, what to say, dear Lord, and where to go, what to watch, what to read, what we see, our Father. We are praying that, Jehovah God, you will take control of our lives. We love you, Lord, and we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen, and God bless you.